I'm Tara Bozinski. I'm Michael Melville. And we are doing undergraduate research with the McGirt Group on the Unnatural Base Pairs Project. Today we want to talk about the issue of data storage. It's quickly becoming obvious that we as a society are producing an incredible amount of data through posts on social media, sending text messages, taking photos, or even a simple Google search. While we can create media with no problem, we're quickly running out of physical space to store all of this data. Studies have shown that the global data sphere, which is all data created, captured, or replicated, reached 18 zettabytes in 2018. For context, one zettabyte is 10 to the 12 gigabytes. It's predicted that the global data sphere will reach up to 175 zettabytes in 2025, and it shows no signs of stopping. If 175 zettabytes were stored on DVDs, those DVDs would wrap around the Earth 222 times. While we have progressed far past DVDs, this is still too much data to store on any available physical media that we have today. We need to find some kind of alternative media to put data on, especially in the context of long-term archival, archival storage. An ingenious way to solve this problem is to use DNA. After all, it has evolved over millennia specifically to store information. Since DNA was first discovered as the genetic material of life, it has been widely studied and we have made great strides specifically in sequencing DNA. Think about the Human Genome Project. Because of this, DNA has been proposed as an alternative form of information storage. There have been many successful demonstrations of writing, storing, and reading information into DNA. While DNA is often thought of as the molecule of life, in the simplest terms, it is a molecule that stores information in its bits or nucleobases. The information storage of DNA can be likened to binary in that the arrangement of nucleobases determines the information stored in that molecule. Reading different arrangements of the four canonical bases, A, T, G, and C, is analogous to reading ones and zeros of binary. However, four bases versus two digits makes DNA much more efficient at storing information. DNA is also an incredibly stable molecule with an extremely long half-life, making it more attractive than physical media as a storage possibility. While DNA is promising as an information storage media, we can make it even more efficient by increasing the volumetric density of information. We can do this by increasing the bits that we have to work with. And since the bits of DNA are the nucleobases, to increase the volumetric density, we increase the number of bases we have to work with, from A, T, G, and C, to A, T, G, C, and possibly X and Y. Romsberg and colleagues at the Scripps Institute have been successful in creating unnatural base pairs that are able to fit into a native molecule of DNA. The difficult part about this is that the unnatural base pairs must be orthogonal to the canonical base pairs. In other words, they must recognize and fit to each other as a base pair without disrupting the highly ordered structure of DNA. This is important because while the single strand sequence determines the information stored in the DNA, reading and writing that information depends on the classic double-stranded structure that results from the pairing of the bases. So to increase the volumetric density, we need to introduce a new base pair that can fit into the classic double-stranded DNA structure. The way we are proposing to accomplish this is through sigma hole bonding. Base pairs are, at their core, simple chemical moieties that interact with each other through hydrogen bonding with high fidelity. If we can create two new bases that interact with each other through a novel type of interaction, they will have high fidelity towards each other without disrupting the order of the original bases. Sigma hole bonding has recently been shown to be functional, functionally orthogonal to hydrogen bonding. So we are proposing to design bases that can interact with each other through this specific interaction. The specific type of sigma hole bonding we are exploring in this project is halogen bonding, uh, where late halogens effectively behave like acidic protons through a highly directional region of positive electrostatic potential or low electron density. Halogens can interact with Lewis bases to form strong, attractive, non-covalent interactions, analogously to how hydrogens interact with Lewis bases to form hydrogen bonds. Um, thanks to Dr. Brian J. Eckstein for these illustrations he gave us um, that demonstrate this. Um, and in the figure at the lower left, we can kind of we can see the presence of a sigma hole, where blue is a region of positive electrostatic potential. When the hydrogen is replaced with halogen, in this case, iodine, uh, the highly directional blue region would interact with the region of the negative electrostatic potential, for example, a pair of unbonded electrons. 
So far, there's been no exploration of halogen bonds in DNA. We need to start at the very beginning and progress logically to determine the correct conclusions. What we wanted to see is, was if halogen bonding was a viable option for unnatural base pairing when the native system is based on hydrogen bonding. While the ultimate goal is to observe halogen bonding in synthetic bases, we utilize Gaussian and density functional, density functional theory, or DFT, to model our proposed bases and give us a good idea of what would be a viable synthetic target. While halogen bonding is analogous to hydrogen bonding, halogen bonds introduce new restrictions on the system. Namely, halogens are much bigger than hydrogen atoms. If these larger atoms are not introduced into the system logically, they can impose unfavorable energies and geometries. So we wanted to systematically make point modifications on the original bases to replace hydrogen bond donating moieties on the original bases uh, with halogen bond donors. Again, we wanted to see if halogen bonding was viable for introducing unnatural base pairs in the canonical DNA structure as a way of increasing information density. So understanding the restraints that halogens introduced to the system was very useful. We modeled the native base pairs, shown on the left here, as a control, then proceeded to methodically make point modifications to encourage halogen bonding. These are just a few of the point modifications that we made to the native bases. DFT allows us to verify the presence and strength of sigma holes and measure the strength of the interactions that they form. The main checkpoint that we used to determine whether a base was viable as a synthetic target was hybrid hybridization energy. To be thorough, we looked at not only the electronic energy, but also the energies corrected for thermal enthalpy and free energy. The decrease in energy from the association of two bases due to an interaction is given by the difference in energy of the pair, uh, pairing and the sum of the energy of unpaired bases. Uh, the more negative an interaction is, the more stable it is. For the canonical Watson-Crick pairing of guanine and cytosine, shown on the left, the electronic energy without any corrections is around negative 30 kilocals per mole. You can see that once we knock out one of the, not, the three non-covalent interactions by replacing the amine group with just the hydrogen, the energy becomes more positive, representing the reduction, the reduction in stability. In this way, we were all able to assess the stability of the non-covalent interactions that we're studying in this set of calculations. We did not see any evidence of a strong halogen bond shown by the higher energies and the modified base pairs, so we moved to from GC to AT. In addition to hybridization energies, we also use geometry as a parameter for determining viable base pairs. In the highly ordered structure of DNA, bases are coplanar and not twisted towards or away from each other. These geometric measurements allowed us to quantify the deviation from the ideal base pair geometry. This was especially important because the ultimate goal of creating these base pairs is that they fit into native DNA and work to increase the combinatorial uniqueness of DNA. And this set of calculations was one of the first where we saw evidence of a sigma hole interaction. It's especially encouraging because AT normally forms two hydrogen bonds, but we saw that the modified system preferentially formed halogen bonds. The region of positive electrostatic potential on the halogen interacts with the electrons on the oxygen of the opposite base. And as you can see, it is highly directional and pointed in the direction of the, the carbon halogen bond. Um, however, like we said earlier, in order for bases to be introduced into a double-stranded molecule DNA, it must fit certain geometric constraints. These modifications weren't especially conducive to that structure due to the rotation of the bases. You can see they're not exactly lined up next to each other. So we continue to methodically experiment. So in this set of calculations, we finally see the presence of halogen bond within the geometric constraints of DNA. Um, and this is evident by uh, some of these geometries where you see 91% of the van der Waals radii. And uh, that just kind of shows that there's definitely a strong interaction with the anti-bonding orbital of the nitrogen atom, especially in the bromine. Um, the en energies of these modified systems are also comparable and in the case of bromine, even better and more stable than the native base pair. Again, again, showing that these types of interactions can preferentially form even in the presence of competing interactions. While the results of our calculations are encouraging, they needed to be experimentally validated. We modeled all of our nucleobases with a methyl group as a placeholder for the glycosidic linkage. So to emulate our results, our DFT results, we needed to alkylate our nucleobases in the lab. As mentioned before, halogen bonding has not been explored in the context of DNA, so we need to be very specific and methodical in our computations and our lab work. We are first alkylating all of our native nucleobases to study their interactions in the same way that we did for our calculations. 
This is the brief outline of our pathway to our alkylated nucleobases using protection chemistry. The alkylation reaction we are expecting to utilize could occur at three possible positions on guanine in this case, on any of these three hydrogens. Um, so we want to make sure that we're aiming for the specific alkylation that we wanted right here. Uh, we found established literature that was successful in using Bach and hydride as a protecting group so that we can selectively alkylate at the specific um, position that we're interested in. We're currently at the stage where most of our four bases have been fully protected, so definitely by here, um, and then we will progress to alkylating them shortly. We'll continue to model our systems computationally and use them as a guide for our synthetic targets. So our calculations have found that halogen bonding is a thermodynamically and geometrically viable force for base pairing. Our immediate next steps are to continue our work in the lab and to use characterization methods such as isothermal titration calorimetry to empirically study the interactions of our native bases. Once we have that control, we can move forward on synthesizing our modified halogen bases and studying those interactions. Gaussian has been an invaluable tool for our research and we will continue to use it as an efficient way to explore possible unnatural base pairs. The use of DFT has allowed us to pinpoint specific modifications that may be more favorable to halogen bonding, saving us valuable time in the lab. Ultimately, the evidence of halogen bonding as an effective base pairing force will support the use of sigma hole base pairs in DNA. Introducing these unique base pairs will expand the genetic alphabet and increase the volumetric density storage of DNA, furthering the capacity of the world's data storage. Thank you for your time.